What's going on guys, my name is John, and welcome back to yet another video. Ever since its inception in early 2014, Pokemon Bank has revolutionized moving Pokemon from one game to another. With the ability to store 3,000 Pokemon, easy depositing withdrawal of Pokemon, and future compatibility, this application removes the old process of having to trade Pokemon back and forth between games. To top it all off, it only costs $5 a year in the US. No credit card required makes it accessible to people of all ages. But the world wasn't always sunshine and rainbows, my friend. There were dark times. Much, much darker times. Let's go all the way back to early 2007. The Nintendo DS is on the rise with its boasted stronger processing power over its predecessors, along with the excellent use of two screens and wireless compatibility. No longer do you have to worry about carrying around extra cables just to trick your little brother into trading their favorite Pokemon for your Pidgey. We can now harass them all over the globe. With the new introduction of a system, as expected, a new main series Pokemon game is on its way. On April 22, 2007, Pokemon Diamond and Pearl were released in the US for the Nintendo DS. The game offered so much more than the previous titles, with the inclusion of GBA insertion, Wi-Fi battles, and the global trade system and a much easier way to access extra content through Wi-Fi Mystery Gift. One big question that arose was, will I be able to transfer my old Pokemon from Generation 3 games? Back when these games were released, the previous two generations weren't compatible because of the change in hardware. But due to the fact that Nintendo DS offers backwards compatibility, there was a lot of speculation that you could. And they were correct. In comes Palpark, a way to transfer all of your Pokémon from your previous games onto your new copies of Diamond and Pearl. For those people who had never deal with generation transfer back in the day, this sounds a lot like Pokémon Bank, right? Wrong. This idea, while great in thought, has many, many flaws. For the sake of the video, let's begin with the worst case scenario. You are getting back into Pokemon, and you purchase a 3DS with a copy of any of the 3DS titles. X, Y, Auris, Sun, and or Moon. You realize that you have old copies that you used to play over a decade ago, and dig them out of the depths of your closet to find a copy of Pokemon Sapphire. You remember all the great Pokemon that you had. Your starter, all your legendaries, and that one cool shiny that you didn't know why it was discolored, but you caught it anyways. You hear about Pokemon Bank and you wonder, can I transfer all these Pokemon to the newest games? The answer is yes. Your childhood is saved. Or is it? Because you're around three or four generations behind, there are some things that you need to do. As I stated before, you'll need a copy of one of the Generation 4 games in order to transfer the Pokemon up to the newer games. Let's assume that you don't have one. Because Pokemon games are notorious for having counterfeit carts from overseas, we're going to look at prices from an undisclosed local retailer. To give hints, they're known for games... and for stopping. This store currently retails Pokemon Diamond for $29.99 and Pokemon Pearl for $34.99. Let me remind you that these games are a decade old. These games still sell insanely well, and if that doesn't tell you anything about the Pokemon franchise, I'm not sure what will. So at minimum, you're already $30 in the hole. But while you're there, you'll have to grab an old DS while you're at it. Why, you may ask? Well, if you take a close look at your 3DS, there isn't a slot for your GBA games. Considering the Nintendo DS is the best-selling handheld console of all time, there should be at least someone you know that has one. But on the off chance that you don't have any friends like me, the original model of the DS costs about $39.99. And conveniently, they're all sold out of them. This means we have to get a DS Lite, which costs around $44.99, but at this point, I feel like I'm nitpicking. I'd like to point out to make sure that this decade-old console still operates before you purchase it. You don't want to drive all the way home to worry about it not working, right? Excellent. Now you're ready. Insert your copy of your DS game and your GBA game of nostalgic wonder. Start a Pokemon Diamond and- oh. It looks like you have to start a new game. Well, I guess I just have to play through a bit to transfer. I mean, that's how Sun and Moon are, right? Alright, here we go. God, why is this game so slow? Everything about this game goes in slow motion. Even the music is slow and calm. Alright, we got our first Pokémon and now I'm ready to transfer. But, where do I go? In order to transfer Pokémon from previous games, you'll need to go to the Pal Park, which is conveniently right below Sandgem Town, where a large part of the tutorial ends. Okay, perfect, so I'll just go south and... you'll come to a huge large body of water. You need Surf to get there. 
So in order to reach Pal Park, you need to be able to use HMO3 Surf after you defeat Gym Leader Fantina. She's the fifth Gym Leader, which means you have to play over half the game to even step on the route that Pal Park is on. Alright, perfect. I've got my surfing Pokemon, I've got the badge, and I'm ready to transfer. Wait, so you're telling me the surfing is even slower than the walking? And the music is even slower now! I'd like to address the fact that these next two routes serve zero purpose in any part of the game aside from Pal Park. There are about 15 trainers on the two routes, and no part of the storyline forces you to go here. Once you reach Pal Park, you'll be greeted by two guards blocking the entrance. They'll tell you that the Pal Park is under construction. What if I told you that in order to even get in the Pal Park, you need to do more? In order to get in, you need to see every Pokémon in the Sinnoh decks. Unless you have the ability to counter Spiritomb from the underground meets, this means that you have to beat the Elite Four and fight almost every trainer to see all 150 Pokémon in the decks. This means you have to obtain the National decks in order to transfer. This process can take a long time. Now I'm not saying I'm a speedrunner of any sorts, but my fastest time to finish Pokemon Diamond was around 9 hours, and that's going really quick for me. I'm skipping trainers left and right, many of which are essential to completing the Pokedex. If I were to take a guess, if I tried to fill the decks as fast as possible, it would take me a minimum of 11 to 12 hours. But once you finish it, you're rewarded with being reunited with all your favorite Pokemon from your childhood. Now you're ready. Save your game and reset. When you start the game, you'll see the option to migrate from your game. Click on that and be put into a new window. This will warn you that once you transfer your Pokémon over, you can't bring them back. You start to think of all the Pokémon you'd like to transfer first. Obviously your starter. Legendaries? Of course. And why not transfer your HM Slave while you're at it? He was there the whole journey, why not bring him on another one? And then you get the notification. This Pokémon knows a hidden move. It cannot migrate. For some horrible reason, Game Freak decided that any Pokémon that knows an HM move can't transfer to the newer games. This part made the least amount of sense to me. Every HM move in the game is in the games in Generation 4. Why would you make the player go the extra step to delete the moves one at a time when they are completely usable in both games? Now I know what you're thinking. It's because of Dive, you can't use the HM in the game. Fair point. Except for the fact that literally every Pokémon that learned it in Generation 3 can learn it in Generation 4. Believe it or not, this isn't even the most irritating part of the process. In Pokémon Diamond and Pearl, you can only transfer 6 Pokémon per day. Why? Because. In addition, you can't transfer less than 6 Pokémon. So if you only have 5 Pokémon in your game, you need to go and catch another Pokémon just so you can transfer them. However, in 2009, Pokémon Platinum was released in the US. This game made it possible to transfer as many Pokémon as you'd like. This option was included in Pokémon Heart Gold and Soul Silver as well. Now why didn't I mention these games earlier? At our previous game retailer, Pokémon Platinum goes for $39.99, where Heart Gold and Soul Silver goes for $54.99, nearly double the cost of Pokémon Diamond and Pearl. And they're barely more convenient. They all take the same amount of time to reach Pal Park, and they cost as much as a refurbished system. You can reset your DS's clock time to trick the game into thinking it's a new day to skip this problem, but let's hope you don't have a copy of Animal Crossing, or your game is now riddled with weeds. Alright, so you successfully transferred your Pokémon over. Now you have to get them from the Pal Park. You go inside and talk to the guy at the front counter. He will ask you if you'd like to catch your Pokémon. Wait, so I can't just get them from my PC? No, of course not. Haven't you learned anything from the 30 hours of game time you spent crying? You have to catch the Pokémon. I will say that this process isn't completely terrible, as they give you six Pal Park Balls, which are essentially Master Balls. As long as you encounter them, you'll catch them. But where do you find them? In the Pal Park, there are multiple terrains. You have Forest, Field, Pond, Mountain, and Sea. The Pokémon are set to be in specific areas. Because there are some sea Pokémon, you'll need Surf, and if you forget it when you go in, you have to catch them all over again. Back in the day, I went online and found a list of where Pokémon are found, which made this problem infinitely easier. Alright, let's recap. To transfer 6 Pokémon, you need to have a DS that offers a GBA insertion slot. You need to beat the game and obtain the National Dex. 
The Pokémon you transfer need to have all HM moves removed or they won't transfer. You need to recatch every Pokémon and then, and only then, will you be able to transfer them to your game. And not to mention, if you have Diamond and Pearl, this can realistically only be done once every day. This process can cost around $100 if you don't have the proper resources. And the worst part? You still can't even transfer the Pokémon to Sun and Moon yet. Alright guys, this concludes part 1 of transferring from Generation 3 to Generation 7. If you liked the video, make sure to leave a like as I'll be putting out more content very soon. I want to thank you guys for the consistent support, it really means a lot. Alright, well I thank you guys for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one.